Hey guys, what is going on and welcome to another episode of Shughead Gaming Presents. This episode I am going to do a blitz review of almost every PSVR wave shooter available as of April 2018. In less than a minute each, I'll be covering what's good, what's bad, as well as control options and seating slash space requirements for each. To make the cut for this list, a game must have you stationary or in a set arena and not moving forward through a level or a world, so you don't see games like Mortal Blitz or Rush of Blood popping up here. PSVR has a bunch of wave shooters, so in no particular order, let's get into it. One of my favorite wave shooters still to date is none other than Shooty Fruity. While its silly premise may turn some off, Shooty Fruity has incredible gunplay and is a ton of fun. As a grocery clerk, you must process groceries in a variety of ways in order to gain access to your weapons that begin to pass overhead. These weapons you will need in order to rid the grocery store of rioting produce. It may look and sound silly, but with sharp graphics, a multitude of awesome weapons, all with fantastic sounds and great tracking. This is a must own for shooter fans. This game requires two move controllers and some space for dodging incoming fruit. It can be played sitting down, but it really shouldn't. Next up is the steaming pile of shit going by the name Lunar Stone Origin of Blood. Only for the true shooter fanatics, the normal person should never be so desperate for this, even in a deep sale. Tracking is adequate, but that's where the positives end. Graphics are below average, voice acting is atrocious, and the gunplay and feeling of hit detection with the sword is laughable. The campaign can be finished in almost 30 minutes, and you won't want more. Nothing about this game is fun, but if you must, it can be played with two move controllers, limited space for movement is required, and the game can be played standing or preferably sitting on the toilet. Next up is Time Carnage one of the newer games on this list. Time Carnage has you teleporting through time Terminator style, shooting everything that moves and collecting guns and mods to improve your also important loadout. Loadout and reload management is the key to this shooter. Choose your armament and shoot through 10 waves to progress, just don't forget to keep those reloads charging. This is dumb, no frills fun with decent graphics, sounds and excellent tracking. 16 stages and an arcade mode will keep you busy for a while. This is easily played standing or sitting down with minimal room required. Priced well for shooter fans, but others might wait for a sale. Next on the list is Lethal. While less of a wave shooter and more of a shooting gallery, it's close enough. As an older game on this list, it shows its age. Graphics are very average, with gun models looking just okay, and environments ranging from kill house rooms and gun ranges are bland and unimaginative. The game consists of various target practice situations involving a handful of single-handed guns and knives that can be dual or single-wielded. Knife throwing is okay, but physics are a bit hit or miss. It doesn't help that the tracking is on the weak side regardless of camera setup. A little space is good for this one, as you will have both arms stretched out at many times. It can be played sitting or standing, though you will need two move controllers for this one. When this came out, there weren't a lot of games with real life guns, so this game got a bit of attention. With the choices available now, this is a miss, unless it's a deep sale and you really need to shoot something badly. Next up is DWVR. Think Doom VFR Lite as a proof of concept wave shooter, and you have this game. While a small indie game, DWVR actually has some things going for it. As more of an arena wave shooter, you will move around the arena using two move controllers or an aim controller. 
using either teleportation or full locomotion if you have the aim controller. Click turning and smooth turning options are present as well. This can be easily played sitting or standing with minimal room requirements. Graphics are surprisingly competent as are gun models. Unfortunately, enemies and wave bosses are easy and extremely dumb. With only a handful of levels, there really isn't much here to keep you busy, so we'll wait for a deep sail to pick this up. Another wave shooter gem on this list is Blasters of the Universe. Drenched in early Retro's 90s style, this shooter has you surviving inside a retro video game controlled by a nerd turned evil genius who has transported himself and you into an arcade machine. While limited in levels, what's here is awesome. Unlock gun parts and create your ultimate gun shield combo, 130,000 combinations to be exact, and survive what is lovingly called bullet hell. Think super hot on crack. You will be dodging, crawling, and blocking like a mad person to survive these waves of intense fun. Graphics are colorful and very sharp. Tracking is top notch and that's a good thing as you will be moving around a lot. Yes, some decent space is required for this. A recommended space I would say is 8 feet back and about 10 feet wide. Two move controllers are also required. Short on levels but big on gun selection and experimentation. Endless mode will keep you playing, so I think the $20 asking price is fair for this. Next up is the Brookhaven Experiment. This game was a launch game for the PSVR ported over from PC VR. Originally designed as a game that utilized a dual camera system for tracking, the PSVR port never really hits its mark with tracking and the graphics are less than stellar. The premise is simple, survive the waves of mutated zombie type creatures in either a small campaign or arcade mode. New guns and upgrades keep this a bit interesting but can only do so much. This game definitely has its fans though, as some love the scares and art design, which is very dark. This game can be played with either two move controllers or with the PSVR aim. Aim support is the preferred way for me, as this brought in a new set of two-handed weapons and better aiming control. Some space is required for this game, as my TV has been punched a few times by overly excited friends. Next up is Gunjack. Gunjack is a bit of a different game on this list. Taking place in the E Valkyrie universe, this game is basically a VR version of Galaga. You're a stationary gunner on a heavy cruiser tasked with defending the ship. Waves of enemy spaceships will swarm you as you scramble for power-ups to help you survive the increasingly difficult assaults. If you loved retro arcade shooters, this could be right up your alley. Graphics are nice, but if you look too hard, you can see the 2D nature of many assets. Usually you'll be too busy shooting to notice though. You will play this seated, and as such, not much space is required. This is often very cheap, so pick it up if this piques your interest. Special grenade. Operation Warcade is a time trip back to the arcades of old with a light gun in your hand and a pile of quarters on the tabletop. With either a DS4, two moves, or the aim controller, the developers absolutely nailed the addicting fun of shooting everything on screen. Ivanovich Games has thrown in every arcade shooter mechanic and gun they could think of, then added in excellent tracking across all controllers, super hot like bullet time, and most importantly, the immersion mode, which puts you right into the cabinet shooting shit in all its VR glory. While levels can get a bit repetitive, the game has a nice habit of always throwing in something new to the mix. 
The DS4 works well here, but the real stars are the move controllers and the aim support. Moves are a blast with the mentioned ability to dual wield and toss grenades, while the aim, which tracks really well here, is equally fun since you get an assault rifle in-game, improved aiming, and you just feel like a badass the whole time. With 108 missions spread over 36 levels, mission objectives, gun customizations, a leaderboard, and a 2D version of the game, there's a lot of content here. The big letdown here is the graphics. While the dev was going for a retro arcade look, I'm sure, this is still a very poor port graphically of the PC VR version. Lots and lots of pop-in and jagged edges galore are the main issue on display. While it doesn't ruin the experience, it definitely tarnishes it significantly. Surprisingly, you won't need a lot of room for this though, as you're stuck inside an arcade cabinet. However, while this can be played seated, I would advise standing. Another older wave shooter and another one that feels very dated, this is Pixel Gear. Basically a wave shooter taking place in the world of Minecraft. You will shoot your way through a handful of levels and bosses with a handful of guns. Graphics and sounds are nothing spectacular, but a younger VR audience may enjoy its visual choice. Tracking is spot on with the required two move controllers, and this game can be played seated or standing with minimal space required. There isn't much content here. But score chasers looking for some cheap fun might find some value here as this can be found during a sale for under $4. Dick Wild. Another one of my favorite wave shooters is up next. Get your redneck on and head into the swamps with nine different environments with ten waves and a boss fight for each. This game is actually hard as shit and equally fun. Enemies come from the water and air and will really have you ducking and weaving for cover. This game includes almost ten very different weapons ranging from a shotgun and shield combo, a grenade launcher and a bow and arrow. Most guns have dual fire, but the real fun comes from putting down your move controllers and picking up the aim controller, and trying out all the modified two-handed versions of these weapons. Oh, and you will get some help from the purchasable turrets of different varieties. Graphics are cartoony, but super sharp and polished. Tracking is spot on and maybe one of the best for the aim. This needs to be played standing, and a moderate amount of room is required as you will be dodging incoming fire. This game is a ton of fun, and even more fun with the party mode, which allows multiple people to share a headset in a tournament type mode. Think Duck Hunt with Attitude, and you've got Dick Wild. Not unlike Dick Wild, this game is also a cartoony shoot 'em up. This is Sneaky Bears, another PC port as most of these are. Sneaky Bears looks sharp and tracks the required two move controllers very well. With 15 levels across three different modes, this won't last you long unfortunately. This wave shooter is polished but definitely on the easy side. Shooter veterans will most likely smoke through this in under an hour. Minimal room is required as you can play this sitting down or standing. Sneaky Bears does try to mix things up though with tasks like freezing bombs and putting out fires while fending off evil teddy bears. A variety of enemies adds some variety and a leaderboard adds some replay value, but ultimately this is a game to catch on a deep sale. VR Invaders is up next, and this is another good one. While not overly long, the campaign can be beaten in about an hour, this game is polished and fun. There's an attempt at a story, but you really won't care. The draw here is the gameplay though. Waves of flying drones and weapon fire will attempt to destroy you. All you have is an energy shield and a laser blaster. Shoot power-ups to change your gunfire, and you can also slow down time Matrix style to escape bad situations. 
boss fights while not overly challenging are fun as they require different strategies and they mix things up. Replay value will be in just the pure fun as well as challenge modes and leaderboards. Tracking is spot on and easily top 3 for PSVR move support in a shooter. A moderate amount of room is recommended but not required. You could probably get away with sitting, but standing is also recommended and way more fun. Ancient Emulator has come a long way with some awesome dev support. If you passed on this at launch, I recommend another look. With pro support and a slew of DLC, this is the game it should have been on launch. Pick one of six emulators, each with their own distinct weapon set and special ability. Kinda a tower defense game, but mainly a wave shooter. You're tasked with fending off waves of baddies and level bosses as they try and take down all your towers. Character class is the big win here, as all are very different. From a viking throwing axes and fish, a dew wielding gunsmith, and an arrow shooting archer, there is guaranteed to be something to match your playstyle. This character variety is also very key in the online multiplayer co-op, where team variety is the key to winning. Graphics look great, and much sharper since the implementation of a year of patches. For the visuals, think Borderlands meets Overwatch. Tracking is very good, although the throwing physics can be a bit wacky at times. Two move controllers are required, and minimal space is required as you will be teleporting from tower to tower. This isn't deep, but it is fun, and if you can get it on a sale, I think you may be glad you picked it up. Next up is maybe the most ambitious wave shooter on the PSVR to date. I give you Raw Data. Raw Data has you choosing one of four very different characters to take on waves of a robot threat. This is more of an arena style as you will be required to navigate around multi-tiered and fairly large play areas. For movement, teleportation or full locomotion is available with click turning and smooth turning options. Developed by Servios, the devs behind Sprint Vector, this PC VR port really pushes the PSVR's lower power and lack of a second camera for that rear tracking. There are some rough patches for movement and tracking, but after practice, most of these can be overcome or at least ignored. Graphics are only okay though, as the PSVR visibly struggles at times. Frame rates are good though across the board, but the PS4 Pro really helps with getting those jagged edges under control. Issues aside, this game can be a ton of fun. Characters range from a dual pistol toting badass to a lightsaber wielding ninja, with each having multiple skill upgrades and the ability to craft different turrets on the battlefield. You will want a bit of room for this though as you will find yourself wandering all over the living room. This will be played with two move controllers and standing up is a necessity. The king of PSVR wave shooters, and a kind of puzzle take on the genre, is none other than Superhot. Another game to give your PSVR tracking a workout, you will be crawling, jumping, and doing a lot of shit you probably wouldn't want videotaped. The premise is simple. Time moves only when you do. Plan each and every move carefully like a gun porn version of chess. Jump into the matrix and take on stage after stage of new and innovative death rooms. While there isn't a ton of content, challenge modes, endless mode, and the sheer fun of playing will give you a lot of replay value. Two moves are required and a lot of space is very recommended, or risk leaping headfirst into your couch. Yep, that happened. Graphics are simply colored and actually surprisingly rough around the edges. While tracking can be a bit spotty as it really pushes the PSVR's single camera tracking. Issues aside, this is a must own for PSVR owners regardless of whether you like shooters or not. It's that fun. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. Please feel free to hit those comments up and just tell me what you think of all these games, what you've played, what you liked, what you're looking for, maybe some PC uh, wave shooters you want. Anyways guys, love to hear from you, love the conversation in the chat. That's it for me, thanks for watching Shughead Gaming Presents, I am Chris and I will catch you on the next episode.